Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to the College Sports Report here on W, here on E Radio, WMCR. Get straight to the point. Uh, the Maryland Turpins actually just uh, went down in defeat to uh, number 12, Indiana. The Terps had an opportunity to pull off the upset, but failed to get it done offensively when they needed to. So here's the game summary. Tua Tagliolia dropped back in a pocket with time to throw early in the fourth quarter and targeted Brian Cobbs cutting across the middle of the field on second and very long. The Maryland Terps to the pass a lot of air underneath it into the double coverage of the Indiana defense, resulting in his third interception of the afternoon. Maryland entered Saturday's contest against Indiana with less than ideal circumstances, to say the least. The Terps hadn't played in two consecutive weekends following a coronavirus outbreak within the team, which left head coach Mike Loxley's squad down with 23 players, nine of which played key roles as it faced the number 12 team in the country. Despite the odds stacked against them, the Terps had opportunities to pull off the upset. Instead, they continuously got in their own way from the opening drive to the end of the game. Tugwayoli led the offense with the Hoosers 30 yard line on three of the team's first four drives to start the game, each time coming away empty handed. Before coming to Bloomington, the Terps had converted on every opening drive to start the year, but a missed 29 yarder by kicker Joseph Petrino after a misconnection in the end zone to a wide open Dante Demers Jr. broke the streak wide open. Two drives later, Tugwayoli targeted Demers again on a deep slant to the two yard line but the ball was intercepted at the eight tip drill by the Hoser secondary. A strong defensive stand was only in the Indiana three and out, one of four on the afternoon, gave Tigrayoli a chance to redeem himself. Five plays and 26 yards later, the sophomore sat comfortably in the pocket and turned it over again, throwing it into double coverage at the Indiana 10 yard line. The Terps regained position on the same play. However, after Demas chased down a defender and forced a fumble that he recovered. The new drive ended in another punt for Maryland, the second of four in the first half. With all the lackluster production on Maryland's offensive side of the ball, with crucial losses of running back at Jake Funk, Robert C. West, Jason Jones, and Raheem Jarrett, and offensive lineman Johnny Jordan and Marcus Minor, most of the weight fell on the defense. The unit stepped up big against a Hoosier team and put up 35 points and 490 yards and a seven point loss to number four Ohio State in their last game. Two of the Terps missed the game due to COVID-19 protocol, where Tarby, Steele, and Nick Cross, both of whom have been essentially pieces in the team's secondary this season. So without them on the field, two-time Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week, wide receiver Ty Freifogel was primed for a nice day. The senior failed to bring in a catch into the third quarter, as he did his counterpart, Walt Pryor, and finished with just two receptions for 24 yards in the contest. Quarterback Michael Phoenix threw for just 37 yards in the first half and 84 in a full game. Though he edged it with an injury in the third quarter, going into the matchup with Maryland, he averaged 312.2 yards per game in the air, with his lowest total coming in week one against Penn State with 170. So the Terps came back with two huge red zone stops on third and fourth down to open the third quarter, but the momentum quickly fell out of their hands. As soon as his team got the ball, Tegraioli had kept the ball on the read option and couldn't find a way out of his own end zone, resulting in a hooser of safety and the ball. So Indiana ran the ensuing free kick back near midfield where Phoenix and a hooser often set up shop against an overworked Terp defense. With an opportunity to get off the field on third and three, an offside penalty on Maryland extended the drive, which eventually ended in a one-yard touchdown run for Scott. Facing a two-score deficit, Tim Violi and the offense took the field once again with the chance to keep the Terps in the contest. More inaccuracy from the team signal caller forced yet another quick three and out as the offense slowly began to hemorrhage life as the quarter progressed. Maryland was on the field for just four offensive plays in the third quarter, totaling minus five yards without a single first down. The Terps' first half offensive performance was very unlike their second half play as the team racked up 237 total yards in the first 30 minutes, but compiled to 63 in the later half. Indiana, on the other hand, totaled 139 yards in the first and 210 in the second. Maryland secured a touchdown with a two-point conversion late in the fourth quarter on the connection between Tick Violia and Demas 
and it was simply too little, too late. So here are three things that I took from this game. I didn't watch this game. I didn't see it, but I heard it on the radio when I was out today, and I just couldn't believe, you know, the yards Maryland gave up to Indiana. Number 12, Indiana was so powerful. After they lost to Ohio State last weekend, Indiana said, you know what? We're tired of losing. We only were 4-1. and one. We only lost one game. So Indiana is 5-1. and one. Maryland is 2-2 two and two on the year. So here are three things to know, take out of this game. So one, some brush was evident and resulted in crucial penalties. Yes, after being off of football for two weeks, Merrily Turpin's players were a little rusty. The Violia was rusty. The Robin Seagulls were rusty. The defense was rusty. Yes, of course, if you're out of, of football action for two weeks due to COVID restrictions and you're not playing, yes, you're going to be in a little funk when you come back and play. So, after playing their last game on November 7th against Penn State, the Terps were scheduled, but they were actually sidelined for two full weeks due to COVID-19 cases. The team opened up a bit rusty and eight total penalties on both sides of the ball throughout the game, resulting in 55 total free yards for Indiana Hoosers. Two of the team's four defensive flags came on third down, giving the Hoosers new life. They ended in one score and a larger hill to climb for a struggling offense. Number two. Good punting resulting in short Indiana drafts. So punters Anthony Percola and Carlton Spangler were key reasons why the Terps were able to hang on with Indiana for so much of the afternoon. The two headed special teams until combined for five punts with an average of 46.8 yards per kick and pinned the Hoosiers within their own 20 yard line two times throughout the game, hindering many potential long term drops. And the last key thing to take out of this game were. The Terps failed to convert on third down. You have to convert on third downs. If you want to win in the NFL and in college football, you got to convert on your third down opportunities. Maryland did not do that in this game, and this is the slight reason why they could not hang on for the win. So Maryland converted just four of its 14-yard downs of its third downs in the game, ranking as the worst conversion percentage of the season at 28.6%. Two of Tegbaioli has three interceptions of the afternoon, came on third down, and the team converted just once through the air. Merrill entered its third down to an average of eight yards between the line of scrimmage and a first down marker coming up short every time outside of four yards to go. So this is the reason why I say, you know, Tua and the rest of those guys, they, they were really out of it for, like, missing the first two weeks of college activities, not playing uh, last – game playing against Penn State in which they won that game November 7th. I mean, they were just out of it. Their, their funk was just inconspicuous. They just they just didn't – they looked out of sync the whole game. Nothing was flowing for the Turpins. The ball was just out of control, throwing out of control. But that's okay. The Turps are 2-20 a year. They'll get better. And as teams get better, they do offensively and willingly get better as time goes on. Another Maryland team, this is the football team, this is the basketball team, another Maryland Turpins uh, sports that uh, was played uh, the other day. And, um, you know, an official scoring display powers Maryland's men's basketball team past Navy 82 to 52. The Turps shot over 68% from the field as a team as they blew away the midshipmen. So this game was indeed played, uh, you know, in Maryland at the uh, college. So with Maryland leading 60-43, Eric Ayala was dribbling to the top of the key, but he needed somewhere to go with the ball. Daryl Mosel caught in from the wing and levitated over the right block to catch turn and make good on the alley pass in before failing to the ground. Marshall played a crucial role for the Terps along with grad transfer forward Galen Smith in the team's 82-52 win over Navy Friday afternoon. The duo combined for 27 points and six rebounds and were perfect from the field with neither missing a single shot as they constantly exploited the midshipmen defense on interior time and time again on Friday afternoon. Merlin also got another strong performance out of its junior point guard, Eric Ayala, who contributed 15 points, six assists, and three rebounds. Our fellow junior guard, Aaron Wiggins, dropped 14 points and a career-high six assists. So with this team, it's it's quite simple. Merlin is 2-0 on the year, having uh, 
won the other night before uh, Thanksgiving. You know, they're 2-0 in the year, and they're looking pretty good. Judging by what the Maryland football team is doing, they're 2-2, two two, but they'll get better as uh, as the season goes on. So, uh, Darrell Morsell got off to a hot start as he stepped up as the team's go-to man on the offensive end. He scored seven of the team's level points, and by the time he first exited the game, he had nine points on three-for-three three shooting from the field. So, this guy couldn't be contained. This guy was three-for-three. Three. He was hitting all of his threes. He was just perfect before he exited the game and, you know, before he took a breather. With Navy up by one point, that's the three minutes into the contest, Marshall took a pass from Aaron Wiggins at the top of the arc and put up a shot without hesitation, scoring three points to give Merlin a 7-5 to five lead. The Terps weren't able to create separation until a 10-0 run, however, which Smith and Marshall played, both played a huge role in. So they both played excellent roles. They both, you know, gave Maryland a 10-0 run. They were back in the game, and then they were just, they just cruised from there. Um, so with Maryland up by two points, a little over midway through the first half, Morsell stormed down the court as Navy turned over the ball and quickly got to work. He drove it to the top of the key and hit a pull-up shot from around the free throw line. Morsell then assisted on the following play, connecting with Smith, who made a hook shot jumper in the paint. And Smith scored on the next position as well, this time nailing a turnaround jumper on an assist from Ayala to give Maryland a 28-20 lead. The Terps extended the run to make it a 30-20 game to close the end of the first half. So Marshall scored 12 points and got a team-high 8 rebounds in team season opener against Old Dominion, already had a team-high 11 points and 5 rebounds as the Terps entered halftime. In his first game in a Maryland uniform against Old Dominion Wednesday, Smith tallied six points and four rebounds. The 6'9 power forward surpassed that scoring output early against the midshipmen. He didn't miss a single shot in the first half to head into the break with eight points along with a block. So Smith put up right where he left off in the second half as the Terps continued to create separation from the team. In the first minute of the half, Wiggins drove into the paint, drawing in multiple Navy defenders to leave Smith wide open. The junior passed the ball to the forward, rose up for a continuously slam dunk. A few minutes later, Morsell took the ball in the paint and passed down low to Smith, who spun for a reverse layup to extend the Maryland lead to 14 points. And they were just cruising from there, guys. I mean, Maryland was just dominating that whole, that whole game. The Terps never forfeited the lead from there on out, keeping in defensively as the duo combined for eight second-half points. While the duo scoring slowed, several other players stepped up with strong second-half performances, with Hakeem Hart and Aaron Wiggins also finishing in double digits. So, you know, just like I did with the Maryland Turpins, three things to know. This Maryland team is now 2-0 with their victory on Wednesday against Old Dominion. Now, Maryland's basketball team has been good in, like, recent years. The Maryland team that I've seen in 2003, 2002, Juan Dixon, Steve Blake, Chris Wilcox, those Maryland Turpins teams went to the Final Four. They went to the Big Dance. They actually won a couple championships. This Maryland team, I remember it was uh, Gravis Vasquez. He played for the Maryland Turpins before entering into the NBA. So all these college players, I'm letting you guys know, they were all at some point in their career NBA players. They're former NBA players now, but they were NBA players after they left the college ranks into the pros. So here are three things to know about this game. So one, Aaron Wiggins got off to a slow start before finding his groove. The junior who was expected to be a huge contributor for the Turp this season just couldn't find the back of the basket in the first half. He scored his first points of the game on a triple with a little over 11 minutes left in the contest and found his rhythm from three on out, including a personal 8-0 run. He ended the game with 14 points, including a three for four mark from three point range and six total assists. Number two, Maryland continued to shoot with efficiency. Maryland continued to dominate the pink points against Navy. If you look at the pink points, look at the scores from last year. If you look at what the Maryland Terpins did against teams last year, you will be very impressed about how they did in their second game of the season. So Maryland continued to shoot with efficiency. That's knocking down 47% of their shots against Old Dominion. The Terps took down Navy thanks to a 68.2% effort from the field. The focal percentage was Maryland's best since January 28th of 1986. So, guys, this hadn't happened for over 30 or 30 years ago. And last but least, the last, the last.